catch your competition is that? And you, what do you think the chances are? You'll go back to what you did kind of early, where one guy starts two games a week, weekend, and another starts on that Saturday game. Yeah, I mean, dating back to you know Pat being back down there, who will be celebrating a birthday this weekend uh, while in Nashville watching the balls. Um, we've always tried to use a combo of guys, whether it's to you know create depth, give guys a fair opportunity, and, and probably most of all, keep guys fresh back there. I mean, I've told our players when Coach Elander played, he played like a maniac, and uh, that's a great thing to have. But that position in particular, it can it can really wear you out unless you take care of your body like he does. But I think to set those guys up even more for success. It's for them to have equal opportunity to learn the pitching staff kind of balance things out for us, um, be fresh, and all those things I mentioned. So kind of similar, and that involves Peebles and Stone are the guys with the most experience back there. Now, Dalton Vargo has a ton of SEC experience, uh, which obviously equates to college experience too, but he's a little banged up right now. Um, we've asked him to play a multitude of positions and he loves it. So I wouldn't necessarily involve him in that conversation for this weekend. Um, but Levi and Brooks, you know, the two freshmen, uh, both have shown the ability to hit and, and, and play a, a quality, or do a quality job on the plate as well. Tony, what do you feel like you've learned about this team so far this uh, fall practice? Yeah, it's different um, with the recruiting cycle and all that's going on on campus and still some carryover from last spring. Um, I'm just being honest, it doesn't sound good, but not as much as I'd like to. Um, it seems to have gone very fast. And what's going to go even faster, come even faster at us, is the information we get out of this weekend. Uh, it'll be very unique. The first time we've ever done both of our fall events, or both of our fall dates in one weekend. Uh, this will allow pitchers to kind of, you know, stay in the routine, I think, a little bit more for the entirety of the fall, but also throw multiple innings. Um, I know it makes me happy when we go one inning at a time for a guy because it involved, it gets everybody involved. But I know Coach Anderson's not happy because he wants to see what guys can do out there, you know, over a little bit of a period of time. But Eric, Tony, uh, another newcomer that's you know probably expecting a lot of, a lot out of this spring, Stephen Coons. What's, what's he done well on the mound this fall? And who are some other guys? I know it's all about options this time of the year, but sure, who are some other guys that stood out on the ball? Yeah, Tegan, you asked what he's done on the mound. Impressive. It's been better off the field. He's put on some weight and. Uh, you know, part of that is these guys go through a spring season, whether it's high school, JUCO, or, you know, four-year, you're probably going to lose a little, shed a few pounds. So putting that back on or adding weight with Q has been huge for him. But he naturally kind of has the competitiveness that we're looking for. It's why he's been asked by the teams that he's pitched for uh, to pitch in the biggest situations. And I, I think the velocity and the spin rate and all that stuff is great. And, and he's got that, as do some of the other freshmen. But what they'll find is the separator is uh, how are you just in competitive situations? So therein lies the answer to why Kirby from day one on this campus was relied on in so many, you know, I don't want to call them high stress situations, but, in, you know, valuable situations or swing moments of a game. And Tegan kind of naturally has that. And I think Nick Abraham does too, um, you know, with the confidence he shows and the presence he has out on the mound. Tate Strickland has been relentless at throwing strikes. Um, I'm, I'm not going to be able to name everybody, but you know, Aiden Hayes the last time out uh, was as good as anyone we've had. The, the two innings he, he strung together as good as anyone in the fall, which was big time because I, either the previous time or the time before it just wasn't good. And uh, that, that's why baseball is a, a sport where you got to get a fair amount of sample size. So it's not like I haven't been in practice, not like I haven't been watching, but I feel like we haven't had quite the full sample size that we'd like to, to judge what we got, but it's coming uh, because this weekend is going to be 30, maybe 30 plus innings of information. And then around the bend is the Fall World Series. And because construction will be blessed to be in some very interesting environments for these freshmen and newcomers to adapt to. Elliot and Sam. How much does fall ball just help you really map out this upcoming season? And what are you wanting to see out of this group come fall? I think for this fall, we want some leaders to emerge. And that doesn't mean like the captain, you know, like a Peyton man or a Tom Brady. It's, uh, I guess I should just say Peyton, the hell with Tom Brady. Um, but, uh, you know, we've lost so many, you know, faces last year off the team, but we also lost a lot of personalities and a lot of leadership. And, 
who those guys are going to be for this group is a big question mark. I think there's talent there, and I think there's that natural camaraderie and chemistry that we had last year too. It's just on a different level. And a lot of that is because we don't have guys who are necessarily the ringleaders yet. Um, there's some guys who have started to show signs of that. They realize it's either them or nobody as they look around. Um, but like a lot of relationships, which that's what being a teammate is, and, and the locker room chemistry is all about relationships, it takes time. And uh, events like this weekend, not just the games on Friday, Sunday, but the community service activities on Saturday, that's when those guys have an opportunity to show their character and show that they're a guy to follow or a guy to help you along the way to speed up the process for a freshman or a newcomer to do well in our league. Sam, back. Going back to the Patchers, uh, how is Cannon a different player now than he was at this time last year? <laughs> He's more relaxed, which is insane to say. Uh, so on a scale of one to 10, instead of being like at a 13 intensity wise, he's at like a nine five or a 10 now, which is a little bit more acceptable and you can crack a joke with him and he can make adjustments mid play. Um, but he's always gonna have that fire, uh, kind of like a Drew Gilbert or, um, you know, Pete Rose was in the news recently. So, uh, you know, a guy like that, that's got uh, an, an inner desire that, that is always burning brightly. So the key is to make that an advantage to you as opposed to it being a disadvantage. So I think as you mature, I've, I've been blessed to coach some guys like that. And yeah, the skill set gets a little better here or there, but really kind of learning to hone that in and direct it the right way is what guys like Simo and some others I've been around, um, the area they've grown the most. And you can kind of see that going on with Cannon. Mike Ryan, and Matt. A couple of probably most open positions on the roster right now, first base and left field. How are you utilizing the fall to just figure out options there? And maybe is anyone freezing out at those two spots at this point? Yeah, let me go coach on you and say all the positions are available right now. Um, I think Peebles is probably the, you know, um, number one on the depth chart at this point, or the leader in the clubhouse, uh, you know, the catcher position, and Ensley would be that in center, and the rest is just kind of chaos. And, um, you know, Dean is, uh, really at the epicenter of everything we got going on. For a kid his age, his leadership skills are very unique, um, and, and his bat and his defense are going to be a huge part of what we're doing. But what is the best combination for everybody in that locker room to have a chance to succeed and for us to meet in right field after a home game and be happy? Um, there's a lot going on. And, uh, but, but you do, you do uh, have a point. Those are probably two of the ones that are the biggest question marks. And Alex Perry's done really well at first base. You know, playing has been fine, but to me, uh, for a guy that's that athletic and was honestly in the hunt for opening day shortstop for us last year at a position where you're in the middle of the field and all that, for him to be as receptive and um, to take ownership of that position is unique in this day and age with kids. Because it's probably not his first choice, and probably in his mind, he's saying, well, these scouts see me at first base instead of shortstop, maybe they'll doubt my athleticism or whatever. We'll handle that because he can do it. He can do it a lot of positions out in the field. And, you know, Colby Backus has played a lot of left field. Um, he's shown he can play center for us in an SEC game and make difference making plays. So you know he can defend and you know he's got power. It's just about him relaxing and being the best version of himself this year because he's worked awfully hard to put himself in a position to potentially start for us or have a major role this particular season. Um, and then Chris Newstrom, Levi, who I mentioned earlier, Clark, and Jay Abernathy are three freshmen that have swung in as well as anybody. And, and, and Manny probably has too, but I don't, no plans to stick Manny out in left field. He could be one of the better shortstops in the conference, um, or at the very least, one of the better infielders overall, not just defensively, uh, when his, before his time is done here. You guys asked about Jay, just his versatility playing field now, field how far advanced, I guess, is that for someone his age? And what do you like about his ball? Well, he come, you know, Georgia's a state where baseball is incredibly competitive and those kids have a good foundation to come in. So he's kind of got that going for him. But he's so athletic and so fast. Um, it, it covers up some areas where he's, he's probably not as far along as he would like to be or we'd like him to be at any of the spots we put him in. And that's the nature of being a freshman. They need to tally up reps. But the thing he's got in his back pocket, and he's proven to the other guys in the dorms with him, but more importantly to the older guys in the locker room, is he's got some dog in him. And uh, he, he's not afraid to compete. Uh, he's very realistic about who he is. He's 
Um, a lot of it stems from family, but he's the type of guy you want in your locker room, and he's the type of guy in the ninth inning, if the game is on the line, you're going to be so happy for him if it goes well, and if it doesn't go well, you're going to be excited to give him a pat on the back, and you'll sleep just fine at night because you'll win or lose with a, a kid like that any day of the week. With Jay, what is y'all's long-term vision in terms of position? Do, do y'all still view him as a long-term middle infielder? Well, this kind of year, or? Yeah, like a lot of kids in high school, he was a shortstop. And uh, we've kind of been through this and, and probably got about as good of a case as anybody of a story about that position, um, you know, the shortstop position where Jay played in high school. And I don't mean to speak for scouts because I've done it like once and a guy went bananas. Uh, their job's very difficult, but when draft day comes, they're categorizing guys based off what they think they are in the big leagues. So just because you're a starting pitcher doesn't mean you're a reliever and, you know, Scherzer's a good example. They wanted to label on that. And just because you're a reliever doesn't mean you can't start. And then it definitely applies. There's a lot of good hitters that catch, but aren't going to be a catcher in, in, in pro ball. Um, so, you know, for me, I want Jay to work hard so he can prove to scouts he's a middle infielder in the big leagues. Uh, but I, I think there's no doubt because of the speed that will have in his back pocket is he can also play any of the outfield positions in pro ball because of his speed, and he's also going to be able to compete with the bat against other guys. So it'd be nice to prove that he can play that position, and then we'll sort out who belongs where. Like Trey Lipscomb proved and has played shortstop in pro ball, but he was our third baseman his last year for us. With Dean and Gavin, they're obviously great defensively. How are you walking that fine line of come opening day when one of those guys can be a shortstop? Yeah, I don't think there's any way to walk it. I don't have I don't have any power in that situation. I mean, we could have a meeting in the locker room or something like that, or up in the office. It's too late if it gets to that point. If a guy's not happy about where he's at, because that's that's kind of you guys are nice to me. Um, our Evansville buddy trying to create some controversy, but if you're going to boil it down, like looking at what we got, like, who's going to maybe be unhappy that we need out there every day? Like, what if you know Barbo DHs one day? He's worked so hard at all these positions. That is going to be a massive story for this team in particular, because uh, leadership might, might be number one, but number two is gonna be who's willing to adapt to what is gonna help everybody the most overall. And anyone who thinks they know that answer at this point, even Frank, you know, yesterday in the office, we kind of played a little quiz game about some positions and some guys, and it's all up in the air. So there's no line to walk. It's again, prove that you can play a multitude of positions, whatever your favorite one or whatever the most glamorous one is. We've, we've now got an army of coaches Thanks to Kirby and Grizz are out there and other guys. We, we can we can help you prove that you can play your favorite position. And then it's ultimately, uh, I guess I'll have to have the final say, but the players will cast a vote, the coaches will cast a vote, and we'll kind of see what the best combination is uh, for the guys we have. Uh, for Arion, you, uh, how have you seen him continue to develop? What's his role you think he'll have this weekend? Yeah, it's frustrating because he, he really loves to play and therefore plays at 100 miles an hour all the time. And um, you'd much rather have that as a coach and you got to rear it in. Uh, but it definitely still needs to be reared in. So that's my um, preface to a story where he slides into first base, a crazy play defensively, not sliding in as a base runner, and jammed his fingers. So like Bargo and a couple other guys, he's not seeing action right now. So it's frustrating uh, because the glimpse we did have at him he looked a lot more comfortable offensively. He's never been a defensive shortstop. Um, he's always been able to defend very well, but he's also been able to hit and, and hit all kinds of variety of ways, whether it be you know an on-base type guy or even for some power. And you started to see him get his mojo back a little bit offensively, and then this finger thing happened. So that part's frustrating. We all know he can play great defense, but is he gonna have the right leadership and maturity that's needed that goes with that position? is maybe a question mark that's been presented to him too. Um, so it's not new news or news, however you want to say that. Um, but he's a good one. We're blessed to have him. And um, as long as he's on board with what we got going on, like I said, that combination thing, um, he will play a, a big part of what we got going on. A few more, we'll go to Caleb, Eric, and then Mike to finish. What does Santa Franklin show this fall? And how nice is it to bring a guy like that who's from this area back to East Tennessee? Yeah, he's shown good personality. So kudos to this area. Uh, for sure, but also um, the question for him was not stuff up in the Cape Cod in last year too. It was ability to throw strikes, and um, he's around the best guy in the country for that by numbers. It's not an opinion, 
Um, it's a fact, and I think that's benefited him. Uh, but also, I think he kind of gets the idea of um, you know why why we brought him in is to use that stuff and try and cram it down hitters' throats, and uh, he's he's done a good job of that so far. Um, I think he's physical enough and stuff is good enough uh, that the ability part is a check mark. It's just going to be how good and, and what kind of adjustments can he make uh, to become the best version of him, and then the locker room and the fit and the love for the balls. You know, part of that was was clearly already there, but it's been a pleasant surprise. It's even you know better than we thought in some of those categories. So I mean, we look at first base, uh, Grimmer, Stone, Perry, you know, up to Fargo. What, what do you look for in, in attributes to play that position? I know Burke, you know, he improved a ton from 23 to 24. Yeah, you're saving me with some parents there because I went I went fast, but also I talked too long. So I don't know. I skipped over our first base conversation a little bit and just had brought up Perry. Uh, because I'm real happy with how he's accepted that. Because even Bargo and Levi and Stone, um, th those, those are guys who first base is not their primary position, and they've not played that the most, um, you know, Grimmer. But guys are willing to go over there. Ethan Payne's been a big help. Ricky, Ross, those, those guys, you know, can all provide advice, you know, infield-wise to those guys to better learn the position. But, you know, as I say, you hit, you don't sit. And that's a position where you'd like to have a guy banging it around a little bit for you. But a massive difference from the 23 club to the 24 club was Burke. Not just being an improved defender, but being kind of a lockdown guy at first and almost making some plays that the, the better or even some of the best ones wouldn't make for you. Uh, so he was a difference maker. But I think, yeah, catcher, shortstop, those are point guard type guys. You, you need a leader. And Burke was one of our best, if not our best leaders last year. So some leadership from that position, and, and you need to be able to hit a little bit for sure. I can play for you. Yeah. Reese has been around for a while now, but it seems like this should be a year that, that he puts it all together. Is that something you're seeing signs of? And then second question with Dean, having the year he had, and still kind of being getting some time in you know, third, second, all that. How is he handling having other guys play shortstop and not necessarily being just 100% locked in on the mecca? Yeah, I don't, I don't think there's much to rattle that guy. Um, that doesn't mean he's got the world figured out or, um, you know, is going to go three for three every game. But as far as whether he believes in himself uh, or if he's willing to take on a task that the coaching staff gives him, he's, he's going to be front and center, military style. And that's one of the things that helped him play in a league where if you look around, despite what everybody says in recruiting, there's only a handful of freshmen that contribute, including pitchers, really contribute, um, you know, to each of these SEC teams for the most part. Um, it, makeup of the roster kind of dictates that a little bit. So it, it's why he was in that position last year, and it's shining through this year, like I said, with him stepping forward, even though it's his second year, being a big-time leader. And, again, I think he's willing to accept any task you give to him because he believes in himself so much that – He'll do that as well as possible. And then in a particular situation, if it means if he does well, he'll, he'll get a better. Um, it, it, he'll do that, you know. And then your other question was on Reese. Reese. Yeah, he's been around a minute. Not quite the Jeff Cable type deal where you think he's been with us for eight years. Um, but I think, I think you start to see the shoulders back a little more, chest out a little bit more. And I'm going to take ownership of this spot as opposed to – you know, a little bit more of an apprentice type role as a freshman. And last year, sometimes competition is good for you, especially in the long run. But sometimes in the short run, it can cause added stress and can cause guys to, you know, press a little bit or try and do too much or look at the box score a little too often and did I do well enough to get this or to move up or again to get it better. And now, just go play. And uh, like I said, there's, a, there's kind of a little bit of a new form of expectations or, or weight you can carry. Is You look to the right, you look to the left, there's not many guys that have the type of experience of a guy who hit a home run in Omaha and a guy who's been around some great players. Uh, so just needs to take it and run with it. Thanks, everybody.